Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're going to be going over buddy team bounding. But before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Acre Gold. Do you know what Acre Gold is? No. I'm glad you asked. Acre Gold is a gold subscription service where you pay them money and they give you gold in return. So if you ever want to fulfill your, your Scrooge McDuck fantasies and fill a pool full of gold, they might be the people to go to. But just don't dive into it because you'll have a bad time. But big thank you to them for supporting this channel. Let's get into the video. A gold pile looks neat, but it's hard as concrete. So if it's ever a end of the world situation and you know society has broken down and you are fortunate enough to have a buddy with you who is willing to go out with you to you know scavenge for copper wire to sell to your local warlord in exchange for cat food for you to eat. You know, it might be a good idea to be able to know how to shoot, move, and communicate with that person because you never know who else might be out there trying to get that cat food as well. So we're gonna be going over essentially the basics of how to shoot with a friend. And we're gonna be kind of going over like the three basic commands which are set, moving, and move. So set, means that you are set in place and ready to provide cover for your friend when he is moving up. Moving is what he would say when he is ready to move up. And move is you telling your friend that you are able to provide cover for him to move up and not get killed in the process. So today we're just gonna be kinda going over, you know, just gonna be doing a basic uh, shoot and move drill. And, you know, we're pretty much out here for ourselves as well because we haven't trained this in a long time. We used to do it a lot back in the day, but I feel like we haven't done it in a long time. And it's just a good idea to know how to shoot with a friend because, you know, <laughs> being stuck in a gunfight by yourself sucks. So it's always better to have a person with you. And, you know, I felt like there's no better person to do this with than my buddy Jacob, who is also a ranger. And... Whenever you're doing something like this, make sure that the person you're shooting with is competent and that you're following the basic, you know, firearm safety rules. Because I had a guy in my comment the other uh, comment section the other day on my Instagram saying like, "Hey, if I'm in a firefight, should I care about like manipulating my safety and all this stuff?" Yes, like all the basic firearm safety rules still apply even when you're like in a gunfight. Um, you know, some things might, you know get pushed off a little bit, you know, in place of bigger safety concerns, you know, if like, you're, like if you're, shot. yeah, if, if you're in the risk of getting shot or blown up, um, you know, making sure that you're not flagging your buddy when you're diving out of the way is, you know, probably in the back of your mind, but for the most part, firearm safety rules still apply. And we're going to apply that here today because we're at the range. Um, we kind of have set up a, um, a stage for us to move up on. I know these are not perfect representations of what actual cover would look like in real life. Uh, we don't we don't have a bunch of derelict cars or you know you know a giant wooded area for us to move between trees and rocks. We have a range, a flat range, which is what most of you guys would have, and a bunch of barrels, which obviously are not cover, but they're here to symbolize cover. You know, make believe but we're gonna pretend that these are concrete barriers and we're taking cover behind them. And these concrete barriers are perfectly symmetrical, um, you know, spaced out <laughs> down the range. And we got two steel targets um, at the end there, one target for me to shoot, one target for him to shoot. And we're just gonna be bounding up to these things. I'm gonna be showing you guys how um, two washed up oh. <laughs> shoot and move together so should be fun and let's get into it Ooh, look at these puddles these look great contact I was on the... 
That was on the last round right there. Yeah, I hit the last one right at the end, I think. <laughs> I just went through the changes to do it. Yeah, the, uh, that's key right there is making sure that you're topped off an ammo while you're moving up. I probably should have uh, did a tack mag reload back here because last thing you want is to be empty on your ammo while he's trying to move up. Another thing to know is that just saying, you know, set, moving, move does not automatically make it so that you're actually able to move. You know, use some common sense. Like if you see that you're taking fire and your buddy says move, you know, just don't take his word for it. You know, look around, make sure you're not taking direct fire before you do that. This is just for range isms because we're not taking fire here. But uh, I think that was a pretty good, you know, first shot. Not bad first go. You want to switch sides and we'll do it again? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Ooh, this is a this is a hard shot. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to switch shoulders on this one. This is gonna be sick. All right, cool. Yeah, I had to move it around a little bit. <laughs> All right. All right, you ready? Yeah. And contact. Clearly the objective. Oh! We're cutting that shit out. <laughs> that wasn't bad. Clear yeah, Just enough to get through the way every time. <laughs> yeah. I did attack mag reload back here. Yeah. All right, so for these next few iterations, we're just gonna be doing kind of like the same thing, but moving backwards. This would be considered like a break contact sort of drill where we're gonna be engaging these targets and doing the exact same commands, set, moving, move, but moving backwards away from a target. So it's like we took like a close ambush and we're trying to move away to a better position. So uh, just run through it a few times and we'll switch sides maybe. All right, I'll start off on this side. No. It's like a forward assist. All right. Contact. Moving. That was actually kind of cool because I actually I had to switch shoulders. Nice. That's something I really don't like. I've been training a lot more with the AK, yeah. and I don't know. You kind of have to like use your what I do. So for you, this, I don't know uh, left hand AK. So I kind of come back. And maybe this is the wrong technique. You know, maybe Clayco. It works, it works. Hit me up. I kind of come back with my thumb like this. And it's kind of weird, but honestly, I I was training that the most um, at Airsoft. Yeah, I, I, use a, I know, I, I use my Airsoft AKs, and you know, you're coming around a corner on the left, 
uh, you have to swap shoulders. And honestly, I think that's kind of one of the cool things about Airsoft is even before I actually started owning an AK in real life, I had an Airsoft version. You know, I also, I, you know, in the military we did foreign weapons course, yeah. but I kind of knew how to operate the gun just based off like the safety selector is the same and everything yeah, yeah. else. But yeah, uh, do you want to run that again and we'll do it yeah. opposite sides? Yeah. You'll have an easier time since this is left handed. Yeah, kind of fucking wrong. <laughs> the here. barrels are situated. Contact! Contact! Moving! Half empty mags. Yeah. That way it kind of forces a reload and that stress, but it's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Glad I'm here to check the second time. Yeah. So we just got done doing our buddy team bounding drills, both kind of assaulting forward and breaking contact using the same kind of terminology set, moving, move, and we also, you know, check and reloading. You say something different, you say uh, dry. Yeah. yeah. I say check, I don't know, probably like a, an old boomer term. I remember it from back in like 2008 time frame, but I've always said that. Yeah. And, you know, when I got my gun back up, I say up. That signifies to you, you know, that I'm ready to provide some, uh, you know, covering fire. Check! I think a, an important thing to this, guys, is you're watching us do it. You know, both of us have actually done this before um, together in the military. Um, so if you're going to be doing this with a friend, make sure that the person you're doing it with is a competent individual and you guys are being safe. All right. Um, you know, rehearse this beforehand, you know, when a you know, with dry fire, especially I think dry fires, you know, before we start doing this stuff, we dry fire rehearse it together and that's a actual common thing in the military as well before you do like a um like a shoot house or anything like that or in a live fire in general you do it dry first and then sometimes you do it with utm and then you go into live fire so just make sure that you guys your skills match um i guess it's like make sure you can crawl before you can run um so don't look at us doing this and say hey i'm gonna immediately go into uh, a live fire exercise with my friends. This is just to show you guys how to shoot and move with your friend in case you need to. You know, if a bad situ you know, end of the world situation happened, like this is the first guy I would go to in my town to nice. <laughs> conduct <laughs> conduct scav operations so we can get copper wire from old warehouses. <laughs> um, I think another thing too is like how you can rehearse this is via airsoft. So. Back before I was in the military, I was on an airsoft team, and we had one guy who went off to the Marine Corps, uh, funny enough, <laughs> and he came back and taught us a bunch of these, this stuff. You know, it was just before I learned any of this stuff when I was actually in the military, um, but he taught us how to shoot, move, and communicate using those same commands, and we would dominate. Once we learned how to actually use those tactics, like, we were unstoppable on, on the airsoft field or on whatever Milsom event we went to. And then kind of going into the military, 
it was kind of cool seeing those same tactics. I was like, hey, I know this stuff. It, it, it works. I guess it gave me a, a, an advantage at basic training. Yeah. But, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, hey, this is the same shit I learned at Airsoft. And I think that's kind of cool is that, you know, even now people kind of cringe when it comes to Airsoft. It is honestly a valuable training tool, in my opinion. Um, especially, like, just moving and communicating with your friends. Honestly, the, well, the one thing Airsoft doesn't do is how loud gunfire is. So that's why we're screaming at each other. And dude, even this close, like we're like 20 feet away over some gunfire, you yeah. have to scream. Um, so it was actually kind of also cool is the two different weapon systems we use. Uh, we were almost like a, like a bear and a USEC <laughs> teamed up together. But, um, you know, I just used my SCAV Recce or my PSA AK-74. Um, the only new thing that I have on here is I have this definitive arms fighter break on here. So if you haven't seen the other video, <laughs> my other one launched off the end of my gun because it was a piece of shit. Wow. Cut. <laughs> but they sent me this one for evaluation and so far it's been doing great. Um, and you got like a Mark 18 yeah, style uh, with some type of... It's Frankenstein. <laughs> pistol build, I threw a RIS-2 upper on it. So and uh, some type of stuff, yeah. terrible break at the yeah, end there. <laughs> but um, I think, Does you know, job. with this, uh, with the guns that we're using, the one thing that we kind of didn't have to worry about so much was, you know, keeping topped off of ammo. I mean, it definitely did come in play. You know, these are 30 round magazines, but you know, if you're, when you're doing these types of drills, making sure that you are topped off in ammo and able to provide the volume of fire needed for cover when that other person is moving is imperative. Bring enough. <laughs> yeah. Bring, enough ammo. Bring a ton of ammo. Um, you know, you know, what would you say is the, the combat loadout you should bring? 210 minimum. 210 yeah. minimum. Yeah. If you're going to carry, you know, if you're bringing an AR, seven mags minimum. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that because... Seven on you, one in the gun if you can. Just in, just in those drills right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm down to like two max. Yeah, I... Like, <laughs> if you get into a gunfight, more is better. More ammo is better. Um, obviously, you don't want like the chest... Like that, yeah. that picture of that Iraqi with all like the chest rack of yeah. mags like this. You don't it's a little excessive. Especially if you got buddies, but you know, you gotta, you gotta bring them up. But... Find the line between maneuverability and carrying enough stuff. Yeah, and it depends on the weapon that you're using too. Because we tried back in the day doing this with shotguns. Yeah. And <laughs> shotguns, just on a normal day, is a constant task of reloading. Keeping your gut, your shotgun up while another person with a shotgun is trying to move and you're trying to provide a base of fire for that person is a fucking task. You almost can't. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's incredibly hard. Maybe we'll do a video on that one day. We'll practice a ton beforehand just to make sure we don't look like so idiots. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, if you guys are interested in more kind of like, I don't want to call these tactics. This is just like basic shooting and moving. Base level training. Base level training. And like, I feel like, you know, it's, this is not just stuff that's, um, that military people should know. I feel like I want to put this out there. For people who, you know, this is basic stuff. So if you're in the military and you're watching us do this, this is probably just like, why are they teaching this? This is so basic. But, like, not everybody knows this stuff. Not to mention, go out and try it. Yeah. If you're not communicating with your buddies, it's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. Do it, like, you know, in a safe environment first before you're, like, shooting around a person. Um, like, you know, at the airsoft field or do a dry fire like we said before. But this stuff is very important to train because, you know, if I do plan to get in <laughs> If I do think I'm going to get into a gunfight, I'm probably going to try to bring a person, uh, a buddy with me. And I want to make sure that that person is trained as well. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts, which help support the channel. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell just so you can keep up to date whenever I post a new video. But that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you guys next time.